Welcome, Baby Glen Church family. We are so thankful that you're gathering with us online today. My name is Saida. And hi, everyone. I'm Eva. And today we are in our second week of our sermon series titled, It's Complicated. Last week, Pastor Terry and our guest speaker, Hey Sun, spoke all about complicated friendships. And today, Pastor Terry will be joined by our youth director, Brandon, as we learn what the book of Proverbs has to say about singleness. I believe that this is such an important message for our current times, especially for those who are struggling with loneliness or if you have friends or family who are single. So let's take a moment right now and prepare ourselves to hear the word of God. However you have, may have found yourself today and whatever kind of week you've had, will you lay aside any distractions and tune your heart towards God? Before we begin worship shortly, we also are so excited to let you know about our upcoming Life Group launch happening here at the church on Sunday, February 5th at 11 a.m. Our Life Group launch will be held over the course of four weeks as we gather together over a shared meal and learn more about what our Life Groups are all about. During this time, we'll also have the opportunity to form new Life Groups, and our Life Groups here are one of the best ways to get connected and to develop those personal relationships. You can truly live life together on mission. So we encourage you to come out and join us. To learn more and register, you can visit us online at bayviewglen.org slash lifegroups. Also, starting on January 22nd at 1 p.m., we will be starting our baptism classes here at the church. Our baptism classes will be run over the course of three weeks, and we'll have the opportunity to learn more about baptism, share our stories with others, and also prepare our hearts for a baptism service. To register, you can visit us online at bayviewglen.org slash events. All right, church, thank you again for being here with us, and we pray that you're impacted as we gather together. Good morning, church. Welcome, it's great to be gathered with you all today. Would you join me in prayer as we prepare our hearts for worship? God, would you open the eyes of our heart today as we come? Would you help us set aside anything that would get in the way, distractions, frustrations, our stress, our shame, and would you help us to see and savor the glory of your Son, amen.
stop the Lord Almighty? Who can 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 stop the Lord?
One of the privileges that we have as those who are in God's family is that we have peace with God. And from this overflows our peace with others. We can't give something that we don't have, but the good news is that we do have this. So as a church, historically for thousands of years, we've taken time during our worship to pass the peace to others. And let's do this today. Would you reach out to someone that God is laying on your heart? Who's someone that you can reach out to? Maybe you can bless them, edify them, tell them that you were praying for them. Maybe you can set up a time to meet later on this week or call. Let's be led by God's Spirit today as we pass the peace. So with the grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Well, I am here with Brandon. He's our youth director here at Bayview, does a great job. And we're gonna talk about another complicated relationship issue. I was single, I think, until I was 34. I got married when I was 34 and uh, spent a lot of time single in the church, pastoring, which is complicated because church people wanna set you up. They feel bad for you. Uh, they want you to find somebody and then, but you're trying to date someone and if they're in the church and it doesn't work out, then that gets kind of complicated and messy. And uh, singleness is challenged, I think, in our culture too. Uh, it, back in 1900, 95% uh, of people were married. Life expectancy was 45 years of age. Uh, singleness wasn't as much of an issue and churches spent a lot more time on marriage uh, and family, how to help. But today it's much different. I mean, the stats as I was looking for this week are kind of uh, surprising is one third of all adults over 18 are single. Um, one third of households are led by a single person. Average age of marriage is now 30 uh, when people get married. And this really surprised me. One out of every four people when they reach the age of 50 have never been married. What, you know, 25% of people age 50 have never been married. So it's very different. And um, the Apostle Paul talks about marriage in scripture and says, don't be anxious about it. Uh, and yet I find a lot of people are anxious about it. And so today we wanna look at what Proverbs and the scriptures really have to say to take some of the anxiety and complicated issues out of singleness. Now, I'm sure there are some people who wanna tune out right now. Those who are married uh, maybe say, what does this have to do with me? But our destiny is singleness. I mean, even if you're married, the likelihood is that you will be single at some point. Uh, heaven, there's a kind of a sense of being single or fully uh, united to Christ in heaven. Uh, maybe you've got children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews to be a part of. Uh, I think this is important. How do we as a church 
uh, be married and single together and how do we be that kind of community. Uh, maybe this is very tender. I know we were talking some people might just be newly widowed or uh, you, you know that their marriage has ended and they find themselves single. And it's complicated because if you've been in a couple world um, and so maybe you are single and what does God's word have to say to you? And so I was single till I was 34. I thought I knew everything about singleness, but I've been married 28 years. Uh, so Brandon, that's part of why you're here. Uh, what has God shown you and shared um, and shared from Proverbs about being single? Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, having me, Terry, and, and uh, I'm really excited for this series and, and grateful that we get to be a part of, or I get to be a part of, of a series on complicated relationships or lack of a relationship. <laughs> I guess that's true in this uh, one. Yeah. Exactly. I do want to clarify one thing uh, before we get started that um, I may legally be single, and I do still check off that box um, uh, on all my legal documents. I am in a committed relationship. Uh, we're getting ready to take the pre-marriage course, and so um, that that status of singleness is probably um, rearing, uh, coming to an yeah. end. Um, so I just want to clarify that <laughs> uh, before I get in trouble. <laughs> um, but that season of of um, actually being being in a non-committed relationship, or sorry. Um, or just being single, um, a season wasn't too long ago. It's very and, fresh and for you. Exactly, yeah. and I do have a lot of friends currently who are are single, recently single as well, um, and uh, and it is a very complicated. And the conversations are always about, well, how do I fit into the church, or what does my life look like right now if I'm not in that season of, of marriage uh, right now? Um, but before we get into any of that, if if I if I can, yeah. I'd like to take a step back um, and remind us of just kind of where we're all at sometimes, um, whether we are married or unmarried, single, engaged, whatever, um, and it's that we there is this tension that we always have between wanting to do things our own way and mm. wanting to do things God's way, um, and it's something that we all really struggle with no matter what our relationship status is, um, and I think be, when we realize that, it really influences a lot of the tension that we may feel as a single person. Um, I know for myself, um, when it came to singleness, it was always something that I couldn't fully trust God with, mm. right? It was always something that I wanted to have full control over. Um, whether that's dating or not dating, I want to be in control of, of that season of singleness and never really give it to God. Um, and I think that led to probably some poor uh, choices and relationships that I probably shouldn't have been a part of. Um, but it wasn't until I, I read things like Proverbs 3, 5 mm. to 6, if I can read that for us, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and not and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. And I think, um, again, like I said, it, it can be really common for me to want to do things my own way. But it wasn't until I fully entered into um, or fully allowed God to have control over um, my identity as a single person um, was when I was able to, to relax and and truly find peace um, in, in that season of singleness um, uh, back then. Um, and I think one of the things that really helped me uh, with that was also realizing my identity in Christ. Uh, one of my favorite verses that we always talk about at Bayview is Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good, good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And well, I think once that kind of clicked for me, when I realized, okay, well, I'm created by God, that my identity is not in myself or in another person, um, when it's in, when I know that my identity is in Jesus, um, and that my future and the good works that I can do are all based on Jesus, um, I think that's when some of the, uh, when, when things clicked for me, and, and now I was able to look at my singleness through a different lens, where it's, I'm not living for myself, but I'm living for God. And um, I think one of the other things that really helped me was when I learned about marriage, and I know this is not a talk on marriage, um, right. and we'll let Sawyer do that, but um, when I learned about the purpose of marriage, and that the purpose of marriage wasn't so that you would be fulfilled and complete as a human being, but um, that your marriage is just meant to glorify God and that our identity is meant to glorify God, that marriage is just a way for me to continue ke to keep doing that. Um, I think when I realized marriage in that sense, then my singleness was like, well, I can do that as a single person. I can glorify God. Yeah. I can do God's work as a single person. I think when those two things start to click for me is when I was able to understand, okay, singleness is actually a good thing. It's not a problem to be solved. It's actually good thing for us. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's so helpful to remember that it's about our 
completeness in Christ. That, that's the first thing Proverbs says, that be complete, trust in God. That we, I think that's the complicating thing. We somehow feel like, oh, if they're single, there's something wrong with, uh, with me. Um, I think we as a church sometimes complicate it further. I, I think, as you said, we send these subliminal messages <laughs> about the, the greatness of marriage. And, and we talk in the church, which it does, about marriage being a picture of Christ in the church, that it's uh, the ultimate expression. This is God's love for us. Um, you, you know, the bride and the bridegroom, the bridegroom, uh, bride Jesus, a bride, uh, the church and the bridegroom Jesus. Um, but I think we fail to remember that, as you said, Scripture gives us pictures of single people as being fulfilled in Christ. And Jesus did it, a fascinating conversation in Matthew 19. Some people came to question Jesus uh, about divorce. Um, and in the Jewish culture at the time, there were two schools of thought, two different rabbis. One said you could divorce uh, a person if they you didn't like them, if they didn't clean their house, if they burnt the meal. You could just divorce them and it was done. The other rabbi said, oh, no, no, you can almost like never divorce. And so they asked Jesus about it. And Jesus said, well, divorce was allowable like with c continual adultery. That was kind of his answer. The disciples, it's fascinating, go, whoa, wait a minute, Jesus. Like, if that's the case, then maybe we shouldn't be married. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should all be single. And Jesus said this in Matthew 19, 12. He says, for there are eunuchs who were born that way. There are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. There are those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Those who can accept this should accept it. And so in his talk about marriage, he talks about singleness. And um, marriage uh, was the ultimate in that culture. You were nothing uh, if you weren't married. Everybody was supposed to be married. Um, and in fact, there were things you couldn't do if you were single. And Jesus here elevates singleness. He talks about some who are single because of a birth defect, a birth challenge. Those who, for the whatever reason, maybe it's a job, it's a condition they are made, they choose to be eunuchs. And then he talks about those who, for the sake of God's kingdom, and John the Baptist would be a classic example, choose to be single. And, and he elevates this and he goes back to Isaiah, where there's this promise that those who are single are going to experience like a great blessing, that somehow the curse um, is not there. And so the picture is, is he elevates singleness uh, above everything, uh, elevates singleness to married. And I think as we need good role models of married couples, we need good role models of singles who say, yeah, I'm finding my completeness uh, in God. And I know you've been doing some research in the rest of the New Testament about singleness. Yeah, I think one of the cool things I learned about while well, as we're looking about single single people in the church and, and what does that look like for single people in, in, in our church here at Bayview or just the church in general, um, was that actually in the early church, um, how countercultural they were um, regarding singleness. Um, especially you were just mentioning about how in ancient times um, marriage was like the ultimate goal. It was like the only way of you being like a full class citizen that if you were single, you were uh, seen as less than. And, and that's because marriage was a way for you to kind of have a legacy, right? Once you get married, um, you can have kids and those kids um, can kind of um, be, be a part of, of your legacy. Um, and secondly, even just logistically, like when you got older and you had kids, your kids would be able to take care of you and, and kind of prolong your longevity. And so if you weren't um, married and if you were single, um, you would kind of essentially vanish once you once you passed away and then there was no real hope for you. Um, but the really cool thing, as, as Paul would talk about, that singleness is not a bad thing, it's actually a gift. And, and maybe singleness is actually a little bit better than marriage, <laughs> which is very controversial, I'm right, sure. Right. Um, but he talks about it here in 1 Corinthians 7, says, I wish that all of you were as I am. But each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now to be unmarried and the widow, and, and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried mm -hmm. as I do. Um, one of the really um, interesting things that I, I came across was um, Stanley Hauer Wass uh, was talking about how um, Augustus would actually fine widows if they didn't get married after two years. And so they had this, this even legal <laughs> input or, or law um, that was forcing people to, to seek after marriage and that marriage was the most important thing for them to look at as, as a single person 
Um, but Paul is flipping that on his head and Jesus would have flipped that on his head and said, no, 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 singleness is, is a respected position that you can be in, that it is um, a, a good thing for you to be single for different reasons, that singleness is actually a gift. Um, and the reason I, I think Paul and Jesus are saying that is because they knew that as a single person, your hope wasn't in your family, your hope wasn't in your kids, mm -hmm. that your legacy was not in those things. But as a Christian, your hope and your identity is in Jesus. That your hope and identity is in Christ and that, that you can now look to the kingdom of God, this family of God that you get to be a part of, um, and that your true hope now lies in that, in, in this person of Jesus, in this kingdom um, that we get to be a part of as Christians. And that, again, our hope is not in other people. It's not in uh, a relationship that, that we have. And as great as those things are, um, we know that our hope can't be placed in those yeah. things because those are not eternal things. But um, our kingdom that we get to be a part of is eternal. And how amazing is it that we now have this this gift of, of hope um, that we can show um, everyone and, and show, show the world. And I think that's so important for people to remember. Like that, that's... <laughs> That's so inspiring, right? The world needs role models of people who will say, I'm all in and my hope is in Jesus and, and not just here's God's love for us in marriage kind of picture, but God's completeness through Christ. I, I think obviously that comes with a cost, right? And you know, as you said, there's not the same kind of legacy. And I think that's the another complicating factor. And, and sometimes we in church emphasize that, you know, we go back to Genesis where God creates Adam and then he says, it's not good for human beings to be alone. And so we hear that and I think single people hear that. It's like, oh, it's not good. Sometimes we think, well, then I'm not good, right? Because, oh, I'm alone and why am I alone and why should I, shouldn't I have somebody? Um, it, he didn't say uh, it's not good for human beings to be lonely. He said alone. And uh, so he creates Eve. Obviously, it's marriage. But I think there's a greater sense that God created us for community. And we talked about friendships before. So I, I think sometimes we look at singleness and we see the loss. And it's like, oh, I'm alone. And there's not something. So I, I think it reminds us to really develop good friendships, as we talked with Hazen last week. Uh, about that, you know, Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And, you know, I think talking about Jesus, but talking about um, do single people have good friends and, and developing that relationship. Uh, sometimes what happens is people feel the loss, I think, and, and I've seen this single people, oh, oh I'm, I'm afraid to be alone. So they choose a partner or they choose someone um, you know, Proverbs 20, 25 says it's a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and later to consider his vows. And, you know, sometimes it's out of loneliness or a sense of aloneness that we make those decisions. <coughs> but I think the scripture said we, we can find that completeness in Christ. And so I guess that's what I would ask. How have you found that? Like, obviously, there's a sense of, of, of loss, you know, kind of the same <coughs> missing out some things, but how do you find completeness? Yeah, um, I know we're in a, in a series uh, based in Proverbs, but if I can yeah. pull us into into Psalm, um, there's a, obviously the fam famous Psalm, Psalm 23, one yeah. that um, I grew up, my grandmother made me memorize. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it talks about the Lord is our shepherd. Mm. And, and it says, Lord is our shepherd and I shall not want. Some translations say I uh, lack nothing. And so it's just bringing us back to that place of if we know who our father is, if we know who our God is and that he's our shepherd, um, that we don't need anything else but him. That this relationship that we enter into with Jesus is the only thing that will complete us and fulfill us and sustain us and comfort us. Um, and it's not to say that these relationships that you may have and friendships uh, that we may have um, aren't, aren't good, um, but it's to say that the first and foremost thing that we look to for our completeness, to look to for um, to be to being fulfilled is in God, in being our shepherd, um, and that when it comes to making decisions and trying to figure out this the, our life, and then we can go back to to Proverbs and remind ourselves that we can trust in God with all our heart, and that we can lean on Him um, for understanding, um, and that we're, when we remind ourselves of who Jesus is and remind ourselves of our shepherd, that he comforts us, that he walks beside us in the valley, um, that we lack nothing and that we can find true completeness in, in God. And St. Augustine says this, 
um, you have made us for yourself and our heart is restless until mm. we rest in you, until it rests in you. And so reminding ourselves that we can come beside God who leads us beside still waters um, and that all the things that may make us anxious or, or that the, the tensions that we may be feeling with culture and how we should be figuring out life that we can um, really come beside our shepherd, our loving father who embraces us and says, no, 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 I love you and I will give you purpose. I will give you um, the identity that you are, are looking for. Um, I think the other thing that really helps us with um, completeness is just being in community. And we had a great series or a sermon last week with hey Sun on, on friendships um, and just having these people around you, whether it's family or friends. Um, um, and I think that's so important because um, just because you don't have necessarily this like committed covenant relationship in marriage um, doesn't mean you can't have those intimate uh, relationships um, with family or friends. Like you talked about someone closer yeah. than a brother. I think those um, relationships with appropriate boundaries can be so fruitful for you in, 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 um, in your growth and in you learning more about yourself and learning more about um, who God is. Um, I know we have life groups here at Bayview and I obviously always want to encourage those, but just having um, those intimate relationships, however many that, that may look for you, just having really, really great, solid, holy Christian friendships who where you can spur one another on um, to help grow one another. Um, I think um, some of that, that loneliness that you may feel um, really is solved with, with those um, really intimate relationships that you can form um, that God, God can bless. And yeah. Um, yeah, you may not have that um, complete covenant relationship that, uh, that a lot of married people would have. Um, but I think um, it doesn't mean that you can't be someone who can say, um, I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel known um, by the friends and family that we put around us. And so get in community. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think sometimes we, we've kind of mixed up intimacy with just sex. We've kind of like done that. And, and so there's a, and, and now uh, casual sex takes intimacy out of everything, you know, so that the longing for intimacy to be known and loved, I mean, we can find in a number of places. Um, I was reading just in, in preparing it with a pastor, uh, Sam Alberry wrote a book, Seven Myths of, of Singleness. And he said this, he said, when I started this book, my initial aim was to write about the goodness of singleness. But through it all, I've been increasingly preoccupied with something else. The goodness of, not the goodness of singleness, but the goodness of God. And the issue is not whether the path or that path is better, whether singleness or marriage would bring me more good. The issue is God and whether I will plunge myself into him and trust him every day. And I think that's whether you are married or single, you, you know, do we find God enough? And I think that's the first thing, you know, finding our completeness in Christ. I think the second thing that Proverbs says to kind of uncomplicate singleness is just to live our purpose for Christ every day and to live on mission. Um, one of my favorite verses from Proverbs, Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Um, Proverbs 19, 21 says it this way, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it's the purpose of God that will stand. And, uh, you know, some translations that Proverbs 29, it's without a vision, people will perish and that people need a vision. And I think sometimes what happens, uh, whether we're single or married, is that we'll go, oh, when I, when I meet someone, when I get married, when I graduate, when we have kids, when I'm retired, then I will have a mission. And I, I think it's important right now for all people, and I would say for singles, what, what's God's vision for my life? I have many plans and purposes, but what is God doing? And I know some of the best times in our life where we're, Chantel and I, while we were on vacation in the summer or something, would say, okay, what's our vision for next year? What do we want to do? When we were, um, you know, considering a new job, a new ministry opportunity, we're like, what do we want? What, what kind of place? Let's kind of ask God where we want to go. Um, we're meeting uh, in a couple of weeks just to kind of talk more about the vision of the church, what's the next few years. So without a vision, so I think that's for a single people to take a moment and say, what's God doing and what does God want? And, and I think that takes 
first of all, just an opportunity, you know, what, how's God equipped and gifted me? What are my spiritual gifts? What, where, when I serve him, do I see fruit? What, what do other people see in my life? Uh, and what's that mission uh, and purpose? How's God wired me? And not to wait. Uh, and I think to trust that God's going to bring relationships along when you are on mission. And I think that's inspiring for any of us to see someone who's living kind of a committed mission. Um, how have you seen that as, with single and, and peers? How have you seen people living on mission that way? Um, I get, I get the, the benefit and the privilege of, of leading our youth ministry. And um, especially earlier on, a lot of my leaders were married, um, but all, most of my leaders were actually single. Um, and a lot of them were single young adults um, in, in that ministry who, were, who I, get to, I got to serve alongside. Um, and I think one of the really cool things with that is one, um, obviously it talks about in, in um, First Corinthians about how um, you have a little bit more time as a single person, right? Your your interests aren't as divided um, with uh, maybe a, a really a co committed uh, relationship that you have a little bit more time. And so uh, one of the great things is our leaders, they had a little bit more time to give towards our student and to really invest in them and disciple them. Um, but one of the other really cool things that our, our leaders um, were able to do as single people themselves was um, they may have graduated, just um, getting ready to graduate and started their career or whatnot. Um, and they were such a great role model for our younger students who were single, who weren't ready to get married. Um, we had leaders who were now enter entering into that, that season of, of maybe they're dating or, or single themselves. Um, and they were able to navigate that, that, that life and, and kind of share any wisdom, anything, any problems, any mistakes that they may have made. And they were able to share that with our students. We do a lot of dating, sex relationship talks. Um, feels like every year we're doing one of those right. <laughs> for youth because it is a really important um, thing for students to try and navigate. And our leaders, who were just a few more steps ahead of our, of our students, were able to say, hey, here are the, some, some of the things that uh, trip me up. Here's some of the things that you should look out for. And here's some of the um, things that they learned as single people, single older um, adults, they were able to share with our students, which was such a, a valuable thing that our students were able to, to kind of um, capture some of that wisdom from, from our leaders. And they're just such great role models for, for our students. Yeah, so thank you for who serve our youth and who are those role models. And I, I think we were talking uh, as we were preparing, I mean, I think the early church, I mean, it was, it was built by people who were single. You know, you look at John the Baptist, you look at Jesus, you look at the Apostle Paul, who was probably a widow, widower, uh, but single. I mean, many of the other apostles, you know, I don't, don't know how many were married or single, but their lifestyle was very much kind of a single lifestyle. I mean, we were talking, the first real ministry of the church was to the widows, you know, to those who were single. And you talked about some of the plight that they had. And so yeah. the church was really caring and, and elevating that position. And that's kind of uh, fascinating. I think the other thing I think it just necessitates is that people need to be content. And, um, you know, learning, Paul says, godless contentment is great gain. We have to learn to be content. And I think I, I know when I was single man those years, it's, it's hard to be content because you're like, okay, I want to be content, but I also want this. And I, I think learning to balance those feelings, to be honest about those feelings that we have and the desires, you know, the, the desires, I think, for relationship and intimacy and, and impact and relationship, those, those are real God-given healthy desires. If we don't have those desires, it's probably another issue in our life. Uh, but learning to be content, and I think content is just saying, uh, discontent is saying, I'll be happy when my circumstances change. Contentment is saying, I'm going to learn to be happy or joyful, even if my circumstances don't change. And uh, I was thinking we live with this FOMO, you know, that's the, the thing, fear of missing mm -hmm. out, you know, and am I going to miss out on something? Yeah. And in this regard, I was thinking, what if we change that to FOWO, F-O-W-O, fear of wasting opportunities, instead of missing out, but wasting uh, what God has uh, for us. And, you know, seeing, I think, that, you know, the contentment, 
sees then singleness as a gift. So how have you seen it as you talked about that, but how have you really seen it as a gift? Yeah, well, 1 Corinthians uh, 7, we, we talked about how um, Paul was talking about how it is, uh, you have a lot of time and it says here, I would like for you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife and his interests are divided. And um, I just want to clarify that married people, this is not a cop out for you. It doesn't <laughs> right. mean it's like, well, I don't have to worry about the church. I don't have to worry about God's kingdom. I just have to worry about my family and my wife. Um, that's not true. You do also have a part to play in the church and in, in the kingdom. Um, but for, but it is true that a, a single person that um, they have a little bit more time and they maybe have some more resources that they can provide uh, towards focusing on on God's kingdom and, and the church. Um, and so the first thing that um, it, it is a gift uh, because um, you do have the time. You have the, the, the focus that you can put towards um, building up God's church and building up God's kingdom um, for sure. Um, but I think whenever I heard that, like I've heard that before about how it's a gift and you have your time, um, the thing that was wrestling with, well, rest or didn't sit with me was, um, was that the only thing that I have? Is my time? Is that the only thing that's right. valuable? Um, but I think, again, one of the important things that um, we note is that not only do we have our time to give uh, as single people, but we also have a hope that we can show uh, towards the world as a single person. Uh, You're mentioning how there's a lot of anxiousness with single yeah. people. Um, single people. Um, I know that a lot of my friends who are dating, um, who may be in relationships that they probably shouldn't be a part of, um, there is such a fear of being single again, um, even if this relationship probably isn't a good one. They probably shouldn't be in it, um, and it's not um, helping them glorify God, and they know that it might not even lead down to marriage, but they're just so scared of being single because there's no hope in, in that singleness, right? There's no person that you can look to towards for, for intimacy. There's no, that, there's no person that you can look to um, to feel fulfilled and complete. Um, but as Christians, as single Christians, we uh, have this gift of hope that we can, we can share with, with um, the people around us. Because we know, again, our hope is not in the people right. that we're with. Right? It's not in a future relationship, a future marriage, a future life that we um, want to build. Um, but that our hope is in God, that our hope is in Jesus and that we can look to him. Um, and that this church, uh, we often talk about at Bayview, it's a family of disciples, that this actually is our family and that this is the legacy that we get to be a part of and that we get to be God's handiwork created uh, in Christ Jesus to do good works, that, um, that there's so much more um, at play uh, here than just a, a relationship and that our singleness uh, is a gift because it shows the world that we have hope. Um, and so I think those are the two things that I, I really see as, as the gift is, is Tim, is Tim, our time and, and our, our hope. Yeah, oh, well, that's so good because I, I think people need that. I think our world needs that. And, it, you know, what I, what I appreciate about what you've said is that single people are role models of that. Marriage people, married are role models of other things and we need each other. I think that's the beauty of the body. Um, and, and I think the desires, we talk about diversity in the body, that's part of our diversity as people who are single and married working together. So I love it when I hear stories of married and single people in the same life group, you, you know, and it's so healthy because I know sometimes people who are married and then they lose a spouse and are single and they can be single 10, 20, 30 years sometimes, they don't know where they fit anymore. Uh, but if we have a place where single and married people join together, then it just, life can continue on. I, I think for married people to invite um, singles into their life and home. I mean, I, when I was a single pastor, I really lucked out. There were three families. Uh, they were all great cooks. <laughs> and Tuesday night, every Tuesday I was at one, and, and Wednesday night I had another family, and Thursday night I had another family, and they all were dine and dash, come and have dinner with us, be there. And, and then go on and, and continue with the rest of your life. It was wonderful to feel like you're part of a family um, and invite it in and, and get a good meal and just you feel that you're a part uh, of something. And then, and then I think uh, we were talking, sometimes uh, what complicates things is we assume, married people assume <laughs> every single person is unhappy or desperate for us, yeah. and that's not always the case. And I think learning to relate to people with where they're at, how, 
understand where someone is at with their singleness and, and listening and helping and reminding them that they are a role model to you of, okay, but you are complete. Your hope is in Christ. So, Brandon, thanks for sharing. I mean, I think, you know, that we are, you know, for every one of us, but single, to find their completeness in Christ and to live their, their calling in Christ. So uh, would you pray? Pray for those single and pray for us as a community. I'd love to. Let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, I thank you um, for marriage and I thank you for the married people that have um, just blessed our church so well, um, just blessed myself and, and I'm sure Terry as well. But God, I, I thank you for the single people who um, have just done so much uh, for this church. God, we just thank you for them. God, we thank you for um, this gift of singleness. And God, I pray for those who don't necessarily feel that it is a gift, that it might be a gift that you want to return. Um, but God, that um, God, I pray that in in that uh, in those feelings of of not wanting to be in the season of, of singleness, God, would you um, come in and comfort? God, would you be uh, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides, that comes alongside and, and puts their arm around them, um, and God, and, and says um, that these these desires are are good, and, and maybe God, you've placed those desires on their heart, but that you truly are the one that will complete them, that you are the one that will sustain them and, and complete them, God. And so we just pray for them um, who are or maybe um, in that season where they are just so frustrated and they're just so confused and intense, God. Um, God, I pray for our church as we um, navigate um, how single people and married people and all, no matter what relationship status you're in, God, um, God, would you be able to help us navigate what, how we can all um, work together so that everyone everywhere can experience God's love and his creative purpose, God. So we just thank you uh, for that. Um, uh, thank you for single people, married people, and thank you for this time. God, would you just bless us? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay.
One of the ways that we worship as the body of Christ is through our giving. Our giving is a way that we support all that God is doing here and globally through our missions partners. And it's also a way that we train ourselves to see and savor God and all that he is and all that he is doing. So to worship in this way, you can go to our website. Also, starting February 5th, we are doing another life group launch. A life group is where we do life together at Bayview Glen. We gather regularly for prayer, studying God's word, getting to know one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another, and serving together as a group. So to join one of these, come February 5th in person, and we're gonna do this for four weeks, starting February 5th, where we're gonna to gather together, learn about what life groups are, and you will actually be placed into a life group during this time. So to register for this, go to bayviewglen.org slash events. Also, January 22nd, we're starting our baptism classes. And a baptism is simply a public declaration of a personal decision to follow Jesus. So if you've given your life to following Jesus, to loving him and loving others, and you haven't been baptized, I would encourage you to go to our website, babyglenorg slash events, where you can sign up for our baptism classes that will be starting January 22nd at 1 p.m. And these will go for three weeks as well. Finally, church, as you are sent, let's be marked as those filled with the hope of Christ that bring his love, his peace, and his joy to a world that needs it desperately. Have a great week. Take care. Bye.